Okay. Thank you. Dear colleagues, students, and guests, uh, I would like to welcome you to the sixth and last lecture in this lecture series that the Faculty of Arts and Sciences has organized to celebrate the 150th anniversary of Robert College and Boazici University. And I would very much like to thank Professor Gutas for accepting our invitation to be uh, a part of this series. Thank you very much. It's not an easy task to present Professor Gutas, whose accomplishments are so many that even the short version of his CV contains too many pages to extract information from. It gives me great pleasure today on this meaningful occasion to invite Professor Gutas to the floor to deliver his lecture entitled The Conquest of Knowledge, Translation and Civilization from Alexander the Great to Mehmed the Conqueror. Dean, colleagues, friends, arkadaşlar, uh, former wonderful reminders of a life spent in absolute joy in this uh, campus. I am delighted that uh, I am here to celebrate the 150th anniversary, since I was also here to celebrate the 100th anniversary in 1963, <laughs> as, as a uh, junior, I think, at the time in, uh, in high school. And from Hellenistic times to the end of the 15th century, that is from Alexander the Great to Sultan Mehmed Fatih, the conqueror, no single agent was more instrumental in fueling the motor of civilization, the production and transmission of knowledge, than translation. Translation inevitably means translation from one language to another. And language, more than anything else, is what constitutes ethnic identity. Talking, therefore, about translation of knowledge from one language to the other means the transmission of this universally acknowledged supreme good from one ethnic group to the other with all the implications of superiority and inferiority, originality and dependence that such a transmission has been, all, has been almost just as universally, but certainly most mistakenly, also taken to entail. Including most of the extant works of Aristotle was essentially the knowledge that was eventually conquered through translation empire in the West until the Renaissance. But this may not have happened immediately after Aristotle, were it not for our hero here, Alexander the Great, in this most amazing historical synchronicity of the greatest philosopher with the greatest conqueror. Alexander, of course, did not conquer this knowledge. He already had it at home with his teacher, Aristotle. But he conquered the world where written knowledge could be institutionalized and establish itself. And with the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II, the conqueror, we come full circle to Alexander. Mehmed conquered the Roman Empire and saw himself as a second Alexander. The ensuing conquest of knowledge that he pursued involved all the elements in the cultural history we have been traversing. When I was first studying physics, I thought I'd work my way through to Archimedes. That's a very tough job. You really need a teacher. And so I'm interested in the transmission of the knowledge of Archimedes to the Islamic world. And the question specifically is, where did Thabit ibn Qura learn his uh, Archimedes and everything else from? The precise details have not yet been fully understood, but especially when it comes to mathematics and astronomy-related uh, uh, science, uh, there were uh, developments, of course, in Hellenistic period in, in, uh, in, in uh, Egypt and in Syria, of course. And beyond that, there seems to have been transmitted some uh, mathematical knowledge to India. Uh, you know, of course, that the zero comes from India. And it got to Europe, apparently, in the 12th century. So it took a long time to, go, to get from, from India, South India, from the Tamils, uh, through the Middle East to the Arabs, and then eventually uh, through Andalusia, I believe, uh, to Western Europe. So there must have been quite a bit of translation from India uh, in that direction. For zero specifically, I uh, don't recall uh, having uh, read, or perhaps I forgot it, 
uh, anything, but certainly the way that you describe this is what it does, and the reason it came that you say late is exactly what I'm trying to understand. That is, if the Arabs knew about zero and were already using it, let's say, in the 9th and 10th century, and there were Arabs in Spain, of course, in the 9th and 10th century, why did the uh, Latins did not translate any of those subjects to get it? And this is precisely how I started the investigation. I said, how come the 12th century? All of a sudden, three centuries they are there, and all of a sudden one day said, oh, let's translate, you know. Thank you.